this is Chris from Nichols Retirement Empire and today we are going to be making a chuck roast on the grill. Uh, I'm going to be collaborating with my wife from Collier Valley Cooks. Uh, she's going to take care of getting the roast ready and how we're going to do that and then she's going to tell me how to cook it and I'm going to be taking care of the grilling part and getting all nasty and smoky. This is the first time we've tried a chuck roast on the grill. Uh, we love chuck roast. Hey, it's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks. And Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire. We're going to be making a roast today, a chuck roast, on the big green egg, which I got from my retirement party. So Tammy's going to tell you a little bit about the chuck roast and how we're going to cook it. Yes, I am. All right, here's our meat. You can see it's got some nice marbling in it. And uh, all we're going to do, because this is a good choice cut, I am not going to, you know, just lather it down with uh, different flavors because the meat's going to taste good on its own. Um, so we are going to just sprinkle it with some kosher salt on both sides. And I'm also going to put some... Um, steak and chop on it, which has, you know, a little bit of garlic powder, some salt, pepper, stuff like that. And I'm going to do the other side the same way. And I didn't rinse it either, y'all. Now, a chuck roast has more fat in it than a typical roast anyway, so it's normally going to uh, have a lot of juice. So Chris will talk about that when he gets it downstairs on how he's prepared the cooker to catch that juice. Now all we're going to do is we're going to put some really hot water in this quart jar and I'm going to mix up some beef bouillon. We're going to use it downstairs. I'm going to use Nor bouillons. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that in just a minute. Let me get some really hot water. All right, nor bouillon is a little softer than the square bouillon. It's about four. It's about like four squares, but it's soft. See that? So we're going to put this down in our really hot water. Now you can heat your water up in the microwave if you don't have hot water out of the tap. Because what I'm going to do is let this sit here for about 15 minutes while we get the grill ready. Okay, I have been sent downstairs with the egg. I want to get this started. Now what I have been having an issue with, I've cooked with it two times. Okay, I made some ribs. They were pretty successful. Real, they were very successful. I made one mistake with those ribs. Now, the mistake that I'm making is letting this thing get too hot. I'm letting my temperature get up too hot. I want to cook these... Uh, I want to cook this roast on um, probably about 275, 250, somewhere in there. So that's my ideal temperature that I'm looking for. So this time what I'm going to do, I'm trying to not let my grill get too hot. Uh, now that this thing is going, I'm going to stack up some coals around it. And I'm only going to wait. about five minutes but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start knocking these down okay I'm gonna close this great down where it's barely got an opening. And I'm going to open this top a little bit. And I'm going to try to let that get to 200.
Now, I think that's going to happen pretty quick. I don't think it's going to take long to get to that temperature. I don't want it to get too hot. What I've been doing is letting it get too hot, and then I'm having to let it cool down, which takes forever. Now, I, want, I know I want this smoke to clear up. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to be looking for is for this smoke to clear up. Tammy don't like to come out here with the grill because she don't like this smoke. I've got on my junky clothes. I know I'm going to be spending a bunch of time doing this. I'm going to cut the grass while I'm doing it. It's going to take like five hours. So I'm going to let this get to the heat that I want. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, actually, you know what? I got a couple of things I want to try to put in there. So uh, I'm, I think I'm going to open this back up. I'm going to put in my items that I want in it. I started thinking before I let it get too hot, I'm going to put some apple wood down in here. I know that's for pork, but I think it'll be pretty good on that chuck roast. Okay. I made a great, you're going to see why I made this here in a little bit, but I made this instead of buying a $100 uh, offset heat thing that you buy specialty for these eggs. So you'll see how that works out. It fits down in here. I just made it out of wire. It's not chicken wire. I think it's um, rabbit wire or something. I really don't know what kind of wire it is. So I made it to fit down in there. Okay. I'll put this back on there where it goes okay and I'm gonna be waiting for this smoke to clear up I'm gonna put this grate on it so I can clean it up here in a little bit okay now I'm gonna shut it I'm gonna try to make sure this thing only gets to about maybe 275 so this is the mistake I've been making. I closed down my uh, grate at the bottom. I closed down my grate at the bottom to about that wide open. And I've got this about like this. Okay, I'm about to show you why I made that little wire. You're going to see why that is made the way it is. Uh, I've cleaned my grate off a little bit. I'm getting ready. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to take the grate out and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the um, with the bullion. I'm shaking it up. I've got an old Berg, Bergdorf, I think is what it's called. Bergoff, maybe. Pan of Tammy's. I'll set it down in here so that's gonna help me have that offset heat to cook this on I'm gonna pour this bullion in here all right I'm putting this roast right here I'm going to let it get up to temperature again. I'm going to let it cook about 250, 275 for about two hours. Then we're going to take it off this, um, you know, take it off this, put it in some tin foil, and uh, let it cook in that tin foil for about another three hours. It ought to be good. I figured I had two hours, so I might as well work in the yard. So I got a bunch of stuff done, cut the backyard, that kind of deal. I'm getting ready to take this off. We're going to put it in some tin foil. Oh, it looks delicious. Look how pretty that looks. The water's all out. So, what are we going to do for liquid in this? I'm just going to set it over here on the concrete. Let it cool off. So we need to put we need some liquid to put in our roast. So, that thing was full of water, but this doesn't look dry at all. Hmm? No, I just wrap it up. You don't think I should put some liquid in it? Put some juice in it or something? Okay, I'm going to put some coke in there for some liquid. We were out of beef broth, y'all, so we just grabbed what's handy, and coke will be good. That'll probably be enough, because it'll have its own. 
Yeah, Chuck Bros has got a lot of yeah. juice anyway. Got a lot of fat, got a lot of juice, so I'm going to take a chance that that will be enough. I hope if it is not enough, we're going to have a dried up Chuck Roast. Let's see like that. And no video. Okay, so he's sealing it real good. I think that's going to be good. Crap. Okay. Now it's back in. I have let it get hot because this is open. Okay, tell it up. now tell them about the temperature and how long you're going to cook it and all that stuff. Okay, it's gotten up a little over 300. And I want to get it down to about 225, which would probably take forever to do. So I'm going to close this thing off a lot. Like almost closed. Down there and down here. Up here and there. Okay, to see if I can't drop that temperature down. Because right now it's on about 3, uh, 310, 315. Alright. Okay, it's been about um, a good two and a half hours. We did two and a half, two and a half, uh, two and a half on the, you know, on the direct heat or indirect heat with the water. And now two and a half with this. And I actually turned it off about 30 minutes ago, so now it's down to about 200. So we just have to get it out, take a peek at it. Smells really good. Let's take it upstairs and look at it. Oh yeah. It's got plenty of moisture in it. I didn't lose any, I don't think. It smells really good. Great. We haven't let it rest or anything, but I'm gonna tell you. You can tell right there. That's tender. I'm gonna go ahead and get a bite. It's hot, baby. Good. Is it salty? Hmm? No, it's not too salty. All right, there it is on the cutting board. Really nice and done and tender. Nice and tender. Looks delicious. Let's say we were successful with that. Let's eat. Collard Let's chip. eat. Yummy yum. Go have it with some collard greens. Y'all want to see our collard greens? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Delicious collards. Okay. I say we eat. Say on Nichols Retirement Empire. Thanks for watching. Color Valley Cooks and Nichols Retirement Empire.